Hi, this is Jared Banks from Shunome, and today we are going to continue our discussion on building materials. So, um, in the last video, I'll pause here and put a link on the screen. Hopefully I remember to do that in YouTube. Um, today we are going to look specifically at one particular building material um, and use that as an example to create new ones. So I'm going to go up to building materials. And as discussed in the previous video, what I've been doing is going through and turning this set of default materials, which I don't like, um, into nice, clean building materials that I do like. You'll notice if we look at, say, one of the default ones, 41-30 space 10 vertical line marble, and one of the building materials I've updated, insulation, a couple things come to mind right away. Um, one, you'll notice this is using um, different pens here, and two, um, the name is a whole lot simpler. We'll leave the pen discussion for another time. Uh, I'm going to do some videos on my updated pen sets and why um, my views on how to use pen numbers and pen sets in ARCHICAD is different from the party line. Um, but two, the name. So for me, when I look at what a building material is, I want it to be very clear. I want it to be understandable by any of your teammates. Um, so that's why I don't want people to get distracted by this number. I just want to see material name. And then what that material name is, to me, it should be a bit generic. Because when you start a project, you know insulation, or you know it's chipboard, or you know that it's siding. But you don't necessarily know if it's, say, type X, or batten blanket, or spray foam, you know, or what have you. So keeping them generic means you're not tying yourself down too soon. All you're doing is thinking insulation. And more importantly, when you are working on a project as it develops, once you know what the insulation in the project is, you could rename that ins this to, um, you know, make this actually spray foam. Uh, so we are turning a generic building material into a more specific building material. Uh, you can change the fill pattern from, you know, the typical bat insulation to, say, some, some dots or something like that. Uh, you could change what it looks like in 3D. Um, but what we're doing is, we're, in that sense, is we're taking a placeholder and giving it more specificity. And that's okay, instead, and I think that's a better route than starting with a template that has spray foam as one building material and bat insulation is another building material and another type of insulation, another type of insulation, another type of insulation. Because on a typical project, the majority of the insulation or the majority of whatever placeholder material we're talking about is probably going to be uniform throughout the project. Sure, if you have one a project that's spray foam, you might have a couple instances of bat insulation or the reverse. But in general, you can start designing a project knowing that certain walls have insulation and certain walls don't have insulation. Or, you know, whatever building material we're talking about has that building material. Um, and that all those things are going to change together. So again, for instance, with this little generic example, we can see clearly what walls have insulation and what walls don't. And as this design evolves, once we know what that insulation should be, we can change it and say instead of insulation 01, it's supposed to be insulation 02. I guess that was the same. Uh, um, oh, because it's wood framing. Sorry. So we're going to change the insulation too. So we should see, yeah, there we go. Now there's a difference. And so we've changed it globally. Um, and why that's important is because there are going to be a lot of composites that are using this wood frame plus insulation. So by putting a placeholder everywhere and then refining the placeholder, we're in a much, much better situation than getting very specific at the beginning and then having to switch back and forth as the project develops. Um, so anyways, that's why here, um, let me just switch this back, uh, we want to we want to keep generic. Likewise, uh, as I talked in another video, instead of having a building material for 2x6s and 2x8s and 2x10s and 2x12s and 2x14s, etc., 
I think it's better to have one building material which is dimensional lumber and then that dimensional lumber material gets placed for every beam that's a 2x4 or a 4x12 or whatever because what you don't want to find is having hyper specific building materials and then you change the beam size and either forget to update the building material and then you have a mismatch and you have bad data or you're just gonna lose everyone when you're the building when you're the bin manager and you say oh when you change that 4 by 12 beam to a different size you better make sure you update the building material and blah 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 so better to say dimensional lumber and let the specificity of the difference between a 2 by 12 and a 4 by 12 just be the dimensions which is what it is because when we then get to scheduling this stuff which again is might be more than you need to do at the moment you know specifically dimensioning or not dimensioning um, specifically scheduling uh, lists of materials we can schedule that out based on a whole variety of criteria it doesn't have to be just building material so for instance we could say let's query the model and get all the beams that use the dimensional lumber um, building material and then in that list let's sort it by width or by height or by ID and let's you know then you can update the IDs to make it those specific you know 2 by 6 or 2 by 12 or whatever but to, to put that burden all on the building material I think is a mistake because really what the building material is trying to be as I've said before is this digital digital approximation of dimensional lumber and dimensional lumber is dimensional lumber whether its dimensions change so that all said um, I think we're nearing the end of this video already I just want to go through um, and kind of go over what all this stuff is real quick so here we've got the fill what it's gonna look like in section um, and again all your dimensional lumber is gonna look the same in section here we've got the default surface um, and again if you have uh, say tile is a good example um, tiles what I'd suggest doing is is don't make a tile building material for 12 inch tiles and tile building material for 6 inch tiles and tile building material for 3 inch tiles make a tile building material if you even need to do that you might just need a um, you know finishes building material that covers tiles and other things because what you do is you kinda choose a default surface and then you override that surface with um, just like you would in an earlier version so if you have um, just a slab and this slab is supposed to be you know, the tiles material and its surface is supposed to be uh, you know purple tiles you override it with a purple with with a surface that has the right patterns and colors on it because just like we we're talking about with the dimensional lumber you can schedule all your elements in ARCHICAD that use the tile building material and then you can separate them out by overridden surface and again if you're doing a bathroom layout and you're putting tile overall on the walls you don't want to be switching between building material 1 and building material 2 and building material 3 when all that's really changing is the the surface so by by at sometimes distinguishing when an element should be completely controlled by the building material and when you should separate it out and do a custom uh, override of a different surface for the element, you're going to save yourself a lot of hassle. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to cut this off now because I think I've already said enough and I believe there's going to be some more building material videos coming up. So thank you very much.